This is the Irish Garden Gnome, inspired by one of my favorite cocktails I first had at Tabla. The original cocktail was called the Cachumber Cooler. It was very herbal, fresh, and vegetal, and so I translated that into what I would do today. So we make a cilantro mint syrup. We use 100 grams each of cilantro and mint, just rough chopped. Then we will add 16 ounces of sugar, 20 fluid ounces of water, bring that to a boil, reduce to a simmer, let that go for about five minutes and then strain it out. We'll take English cucumbers and we'll run them through a juicer so we have a nice, deep, rich, green cucumber juice. We'll then take fresh limes and juice them and then we will combine all three in a shaker. We'll take one fluid ounce cilantro mint syrup, three quarter ounce of fresh lime juice, one ounce of fresh cucumber juice. We'll shake that up, pour it through both a Hawthorne strainer and a fine mesh strainer into a Collins glass over ice. Add a little bit of club soda, and then top it off with a wild foraged Irish rose and rosé gin, so that it becomes nice and layered from pink through green. Before Common Good, if you divided my life in half, I think professionally, it's great. Personally, spiraling. Mike comes into our lives saying we could do this project in the suburbs. He was like, Chad, I either need to leave this industry or I need to do a bar that's dedicated to the glory of God. And I was like, I don't know what that means. Like, <laughs> that sounds great. It's something I think I'd love to figure out. Right after college, I went to New York City. You move there, you're like, I'm gonna do the acting thing, and then you end up serving tables. I was working at Starbucks, loving the business and product aspect of hospitality. Chad and I met at church. He was hiring people to go help start a new restaurant with him. We heard he was gonna be the beverage director for the super cool chef in Wicker Park, and we worked together at Mott Street for about a year. I met this cute boy, Chad Haugi, who is my husband now. It was very easy to start dreaming with him. We had designed this concept of this like kind of glamping resort in Colorado that didn't pan out. But it did help us understand how to start translating the things that we cared about the most into a business. We had a little baby in 2016. Chad would work until late, three in the morning, sometimes four in the morning. I would be the one to, you know, get up early. So that was really tough. At a certain point, watching my friends who I sort of came up with in the industry in Chicago become successful, become sous chefs or executive chefs or beverage directors or bar managers or head bartenders at prestigious places. And we're like, how, how are things? Like, like, oh, you know, it's hard to even have a dog right now. And we kind of want to have kids, but that's not even a possibility with like healthcare and time off and our schedules is just too crazy. Like your heart just sinks. I decided I needed to leave the industry or go open a bar that did things very differently. Uh, my deal breaker was if Chad and Alicia would do it. I always respected their obscenely principled stance on things from how they thought that staff and guests should be treated, that there should be work-life balance. If they weren't interested, then I was just gonna walk away and go do something else. I kind of dug my heels in the ground saying, we're not going out there. I'm planted here in the city, I love it, until I walked into the space. And it really made sense when we started to evaluate what we wanted next. This is the Clarified Aviation. When it first went on our menu, right when we opened, it was called the Turning Point Aviation as a reference to the building that we're in, which is called the Turning Point Building. This uh, version of an aviation has a pH indicator in it, which is butterfly pea flower water. And it turns color from blue to pink as it sits in the cocktail. We first juice fresh lemons, and then we'll add pectin X, and two fining agents. We let them sit inside the lemon juice for a while, then we run it through the centrifuge so it becomes nice and clear. Then we'll take butterfly pea flowers and we'll steep them inside of creme de violette for about five minutes, and then we'll strain that through and then we have our pea flower creme de violette tea. We're making a five cocktail batch, so we start off with 10 ounces of St. George Botanivore. Then we will add 3.75 ounces of clarified lemon juice. 
followed by two and a half ounces of Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. We will add a skinny three quarter ounce of simple syrup. Three quarter ounces of pea flour steeped creme de violette. Five ounces of water. Because we're gonna stir this cocktail, even though it has citrus in it, it only pulls about half fluid ounce of water from the ice into the cocktail. And so we can stir it and it gets just the right amount of chill and water integration that you want. My wife and I were at our church and our pastor is doing a sermon series on radical hospitality. Uh, hey, if we're not gonna get our like cocktail bar's name from this sermon series, what are we doing? He started saying that the ultimate goal of hospitality is the common good of all people. Like that's 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 our that's our bar name. Common good. We're trying to, like with our values, put ourselves last. We want to put the employee first, start the virtuous cycle. Because we want to invite our staff members in on a higher than average hourly rate and offer full benefits to anybody who works for us. If this is something that they want to do and they are passionate about, we want to make it an option for them not to have it just be a stepping stone. All of us, under the guiding ethos of if you give a shit, you know, making sure our cocktails are great, really caring about the product we, we produce. The thing we always come back to is craft for community. And for us, that means we want to make the best cocktails anyone's ever had and we want to do it in a way that disarms people and brings people together. My heart for the community aspect of it has grown. I still love the craft, but nowadays I'm like, I, I think I finally am the last one to get it. Yes, the cocktail part is, we're always going to be obsessed with that, but it really is nothing without the, the people there to share it, to receive it. It's called a cocktail house because we want to extend our living room to you as if you were coming into our home and enjoying something that we love. This is the Logan Square love story. Uh, this cocktail was riffed one night for a guest who was sitting at the bar talking with her friend uh, about doing some uh, really important work with refugees in Chicago and how difficult it was and they just didn't know if they were doing a good job. And so I literally just took a deep breath and just riffed this drink for them and said, here you go, this is from us to you. It's the first time it's been made. And I just want you to know that there's a lot of people in the city who appreciate what you do. Uh, and they love the cocktail. And so I was like, you know what? One day this will go on, on my first menu at my cocktail bar. So lo and behold, when we opened Common Good, this was on our first menu. It is uh, one ounce Jepson's Malort, one ounce Chase Elderflower or pure Elderflower liqueur, three quarter ounces of fresh lime juice, three quarter ounces simple syrup, and three quarter ounces egg white or just a single egg white. You're gonna shake with one cube and basil in the shaker until the cube is completely dissolved. Once you do that, you can just single strain using a Hawthorne strainer into a snifter on the rocks garnish with a piece of basil. I think if you would have asked me what's in Common Goods future four years ago, I don't think I would have projected where we're at now. We're like expanding our brand, like we're opening up a new restaurant with an amazing chef from Chicago. What's going to happen here? We've discovered things like the to-go cocktail program and the cocktail club. I hope that Common Good in the future grows wider and deeper into that community aspect, donating to fundraisers or just holding down a space for people. We can host things like weddings here and we can continue to kind of sow into the, the dynamic of this community. I'd love to see the garden expand, get a little bit more space to see people because like, people keep coming away, but we don't, have, we don't have places to put them. Common Good has really grown to be way more than me or Chad or Alicia. That is what's most exciting to me. We're seeing our employees step up and like just take little responsibilities away from us and like blossom into those roles. Honestly, with my focus going on to, to new projects, uh, I'll still always be here, I'll still always be a part of it, but really it's gonna be driven by a lot of new voices that God brings in.